Hello guys, welcome back, finally, to The Drag Detective. If you haven't been following my social media, life's been a mess. Laptop died, I had to get a new one, here we are. And we're finally back with some new videos, and specifically this video, which has been requested like 5,000 times, and I have said I would do it about 10 times, and then I go to actually make it, and um, it doesn't happen. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I've been gone for like a month. Let me finally do this for them, give them what they've been asking for, get it out of my way. Let it, let's move on from this godforsaken season. Canada's Drag Race 1. We just saw Canada's Drag Race 2 finish with much, much better reception and results from the fandom. And I'm excited to talk about that season next. But first, we have to get this train wreck out of the way. So welcome to, without further ado, finally, the Riggery of Canada's Drag Race 1. There's a couple reasons why I had like little to no desire to make this video. One reason is that this rigged series is meant to make sense of the production decisions on Drag Race. I try to go through the season and create kind of like a clear, concise story from start to finish on everything that's happened, why it happened, and what led to it. But with Canada's Drag Race, there's not like a through line on most seasons where I can like clearly decipher why decisions were made each week. There are so many what the fuck moments and decisions that don't lead to any narrative merit at all. Decisions are made in one episode that I think are leading towards a storyline that then never comes. It was really, really hard to try and make sense of this season, but I think I did the best that I could. The other reason, and actually the main reason, is I absolutely hate this season. Drag Race should be a show that like uplifts and shows off some of the best queer talent in the country, whatever country they're in, and this season is nothing but tearing queer artists apart. It's no mystery that the judging on the season was horrendous, not just the decisions that they made, but the way that they talked to and treated these queens was straight up terrible at times, and I hated watching it, and I hated rewatching it so that I could make this video, but I did it, we've, we've crossed that bridge, and we're ready to move on with our lives. Before we dive in, I want to highlight a few videos about the season that I think shed a lot of light on the things that were happening behind the scenes. Bussy Queen has some incredible videos on this season. Not shocked, they are literally the greatest Drag Race channel. Those are linked down below. Alona Verley also recently gave an interview with the iconic Joseph Shepard that explains a lot of the behind-the-scenes tea and helps paint the bigger picture of what really went down on set. So now, with all of our resources intact, let's break it down episode by episode, the riggery and the mishandling of Canada's Drag Race. All right, our premiere episode of the series is a design challenge where the queens have to make outfits using boxes containing different Canadian-themed materials. Now, this way of dishing out materials has been done before, namely on the season six premiere episodes, but I always thought it's a little bit unfair because giving every queen different materials just immediately puts them on different playing fields right off the bat. Yes, a good seamstress and a good designer can make a good look out of anything, but there's no getting around the fact that some of these materials are going to be better than others. I think it's so much more fair to just give everyone the same pile of crap to choose from rather than this, but regardless, the queens managed to turn out some incredible looks. I mean, Anastasia Anakwe managed to make a floor-length puffer jacket in the matter of two days. I mean, it's jaw-dropping. Kiara made a head-to-toe scarecrow look that read high fashion and made excellent use of a lot of the materials she was given. Now, both of them were just safe. But then these two looks were in the top. 
And this is the look that won the challenge. And so began the hate train for Rita Baga that would last all season in the fandom. Now, I am definitely not the first person to highlight the fact that Rita Baga was highly favored throughout the season. I mean, the amount of hate that she got for it was really, really hard to watch. I've never understood why the fans turn against the queen for being favored. Like, did she have anything to do with it? But in this case, the fans already turned against the judges. So this, oh my gosh, this season was like a bloodbath online. I actually would not have been as like mad that Rita won this challenge if she just like left the damn coat on because that cocktail dress underneath that was a choice. I mean, there's a myriad of amazing looks on the runway tonight. Anastasia, Kiara, Tainomi looks great. Scarlet looks great. Alona. The fact that Rita was chosen over all of them. Ugh, riggery. You know what I mean? Like, what else could I say? I think producers saw a lot of winner potential with Rita right from the start. I mean, she's the quirky, campy, Nina West-esque queen of the season, who has a huge name in the Canadian drag scene, is a, like, full-on professional, and would be a great representative for the network. But production pretty much shot themselves in the foot for any chance of giving Rita Baga the crown by how much they favored her all season long. Production wanting Rita Baga to win the season is very evident as she gets saved from the bottom given head-scratching wins and had possible negative critiques overlooked by the judges. And in the end, all of this combined turned the audience against Rita. I call this the GG Good effect, where production does whatever they can to save and prop up a queen they think the fandom is going to obsess over, but in the end, all it does is more on that later. It's time to talk about another highly favored contestant on the season, Miss Boa, the bitch on Arrival. I 1000% understand why Boa was pushed. I mean, her personality is amazing. She gives great confessionals. She brought the drama. She is perfect for this format of television. But I always expected her to do better in the challenges than she actually did. Like this design look, for example, these potato boobs were up to her chin and completely lopsided. She literally just glued things to a corset. It's exhausting to look at, but she's put in the top because of her personality on the runway. I'm sorry, but this isn't a personality challenge. It's a design challenge, and her design look was not good. It was like bottom three worthy, if you ask me. So that's two of the three spots in the top going to someone undeserved, and that's just not a good idea to do right off the bat. I highlight a lot in this series that the first episode or the first two episodes usually don't have much riggery because the producers are watching to see who stands out, who exceeds expectations, and who doesn't live up to their potential preseason. Then, once they have the basic layout of how the queens are delivering, they pick their favorites and map out the structure of how they want the season to go, who they want to see at the end. This premiere felt like they already knew who they wanted to highlight and put in the top before the episode even started filming. I mean, you have two queens with arguably the biggest personalities in Jimbo and Boa, and then you have an established camp queen with lots of winner potential in Rita. It didn't matter what they were wearing, it just mattered that they were going to be in the top and they were going to be highlighted from the start. And that's what the critiques felt like a lot of the time. It didn't matter what they were delivering in the challenge. Placements were determined before it was even given to the queens to fit whatever the narrative was for that week or to send home whoever they wanted to send home in that week. I will say, overall, the bottom three did feel correct. But the fact that their critiques gave a girl a panic attack on day two... If that wasn't warning enough to production to kind of scale it back on the harshness in the critiques, I don't know what would have been. We know now in the long list of things we learned about the horrific production 
of the season afterwards that the judges were told to be shady, and Jeffrey especially was playing a part on that judging panel. I wouldn't be surprised if the judges were reading off a teleprompter with some of those critiques, or some of those like really harsh ones were just given to them in their earpiece. That one about beating Alona with a stick? Um, yikes. Juice and Lemon are in the bottom two. They give an incredible lip sync. Juice Box goes home, and sadly, one of the tradiest trades the show has ever seen leaves way too soon. Episode two is the Heritage Moments acting challenge, and there's a lot to break down here. First, I want to talk about Kine. So, Kine is a YouTuber. I watched her videos long before she was ever cast on the show. She was one of the most well-known queens on this season, for sure, because of her internet presence. And I'm just gonna say it, I think Brooklyn Heights had her purposely axed from the show after their heated moment in the workroom. During the recording of the acting scenes, Jeffrey is the director, and can I just say, this is the real Jeffrey. He's helpful, he's encouraging, he's genuine, he seems like he really is invested in helping these queens do the best job they can, and it makes his fake persona that he was forced to put on in the judging even more obvious now looking back. Well, during the recording, Jeffrey is literally laughing at Kind's delivery of her lines and telling her she's doing a good job. But then when it comes to the critiques, they have nothing nice to say about her performance. Now, I understand maybe throwing her in the bottom three because her runway was just not up to par with the rest of the queens and maybe call her out for her attitude too. But there were like two queens who did way worse than her in this challenge. Overall, Kine was fine. Kine did fine. But if you notice during the scene, a lot of the times Kine has a line, they cut to another girl. Then you have Brooke telling her in the critiques that she fell into the background. Well, duh, because you never actually showed her giving her lines. This was a setup. I mean, point blank. If the bottom two was Boa and Tainomi like it should have been, Boa would have been toast. And she is too good for TV to lose so soon, so why not take out the bratty internet queen who has beef with Brooke and a bad runway? Speaking of runways, they actually come into play a lot on this season. On, like, American and UK Drag Race, the runway is usually, like, a tiebreaker, if that. If two queens did equally as well or equally as terrible, the runway will determine who wins and who is put in the bottom. But on Canada's Drag Race, it felt like they used it as justification for a lot of decisions. First, we have Lemon getting her win here. Now, Lemon is one of my favorite queens on this entire season. She is so funny. She's proven since the show ended what a superstar she is. I mean, she's like a TikTok star now. Do I know Lemon? Do I know Lemon? Don't need to ask for it for me to get it. When you drop stacks on this, I charge credit, you know what I mean? But <laughs> the judges were praising her performance in the acting challenge, and I thought she was, like, fine. Like, she she did fine. But they were really hyping her up, and I was like, um, okay, sure, sure. She delivered her lines well, but she had good characterization, but overall... Her part was just kind of flat compared to a lot of other parts in the scenes. Where Lemon truly shined this episode was on the runway. Oh my god, this is one of my favorite looks of the season. For a gown, just like a regular old gown to really like shock me, it doesn't happen very often. But this gown had me on the floor, gasping for air. I mean, she looked absolutely stunning, and she ate up every other girl on the runway this week, except for maybe, like, Jimbo. But I was shocked to see Priyanka not get the win this week. She had a standout role that she acted to perfection, and she got the most amount of laughs out of the judges. Plus, I mean, she's known for being on a kid's television show, so it kind of would have made sense to give her the win in the acting challenge, and then she doesn't. But Lemon had a better runway, so Lemon gets the win, I guess. 
Episode 3, we have the iconic disaster, not sorry about it, and the Dragaton challenge on UK3 actually gave me big not sorry about it energy, because in both cases, it's obvious the girls just didn't have enough time to get the moves down, and production of the challenge was very clearly rushed. And that just sucks. I mean, production should be setting these girls up to be the best they can be in these challenges. No one wants to watch a total flop of a challenge, you know what I mean? Setting the girls up for failure by not giving them the proper tools to succeed, like enough time to learn an entire dance routine, is just annoying to me. And because of that, like, half the girls in this challenge could have been in the bottom. Alona, Jimbo, Tainomi, and Anastasia all struggled hard with this challenge, and it's interesting to look at who they decided to put in the bottom and who they decided to save out of this group. Now, Kiara and Alona were both low, while Tainomi and Anastasia were in the bottom two. Kiara was kind of a surprise for me to see in the bottom. She didn't have one of the best performances of the night, but I didn't notice her messing up like I noticed a lot of the other girls. And I think the reason that she was in the bottom for this week was definitely because of her runway. This was the hair runway, and wow, this is one of the best runways of the season. Honestly, this might be the best runway of the season. Everyone did something different, and most of them were so outside of the box, showing exactly who all these queens are as artists. If we're bringing runway into the placement decisions, which I guess we are this season, Starzy, Tainomi, and Kiara struggled the most, so I guess it makes sense that all three of them were in the bottom four, and I think Alona's runway is what saved her from lip-syncing, honestly. She was definitely worse than, like, Tainomi in the challenge. She missed choreo, she faded into the background, her verse was kind of awkward, but Tainomi had what might have been the worst runway of this entire season, and Alona had one of the best of the night. The interesting thing here was Jimbo. Jimbo was horrible in this challenge. She had a bad verse, she had bad dancing, no stage presence. It kind of looked like she didn't even try throughout the performance, but she did have a super fun runway, but was it really enough to save her from the bottom? I don't necessarily think so. Jimbo is one of those special queens who, the second they walk into the workroom, you know they are a total superstar. It's Heidi in Closet, Simone, Lawrence Cheney, Tease. She had given two super solid performances in the first two episodes and has been giving some of the best runways of the season. Losing her this early would be a huge disappointment as she had fan favorite written all over her. Looking at what the lip sync song is, which is absolutely not, by Deborah Cox, basically any of these other queens would absolutely wash Jimbo to this kind of song. Putting her in the bottom at all would have basically been her death sentence in the competition. But I still think she at least should have been low. I mean, she was the definition of Go Girl Give Us Nothing in that challenge, but it's fine because production will make up for saving her here by robbing her for the rest of the competition. Starzy and Tainomi lip sync here, and it's really sad to see Starzy go so soon. She was iconic in the confessional, is one of the best seamstresses Drag Race has ever seen, and had such a heartfelt and important story to tell about her life and her struggles. But the next challenge is another sewing challenge, so... Is it maybe a little coincidence we lose the best seamstress who we didn't already give a win or a place in the top for a design challenge right before another sewing challenge? Tinfoil hat moment, but who knows really. She didn't do well in the challenge, so I'm not about to say it's rigged. It's just a little like, hmm. As for the tops of the week, there were just as many girls who did absolutely amazing in this challenge that flopped it. So Priyanka, Lemon, Boa, and Scarlet all did extremely well. But out of the four, I guess Lemon had the worst runway, so she's kept out of the top. Which is kind of interesting, because I actually thought she did the best out of the entire challenge. But Priyanka gets the win, and now we move on to episode four, the absolute train wreck. Notice how I said that like ten times now 
of a design challenge and the episode that made me stop watching the season when it originally aired. Now, after watching how the queens had been treated by the judges before, I was already kind of pretty much over the season. But when the use it better maybe moment went viral, I didn't even tune in to watch the episode and stopped watching the season entirely. I don't want to see drag queens talk down to and treated like shit. So yeah, I realized the season was not for me and I gave up. I actually never saw the rest of the season until now. I mean, I saw some of the challenges and runways on like YouTube and Instagram, but as for watching the actual season, I stopped. The only other season that made me do that was All Stars 5 and Drag Race Down Under. So, <sighs> anyways, episode four, the queens pair off into groups of three and become fashion houses, which I think was such a good challenge idea. They all have to create looks using the same type of material, paper, plastic, and metal. We can pretty much move on past the tops of the week. Rita, Scarlett, and Kiara are team plastic, and they nail every facet of this challenge to a T. They all look like they're from the same fashion line, but they have looks that are different enough to be distinguishable. They really hit that sweet spot, and Rita is given the win, but unlike her last win, I think this one is pretty unarguable. What I really want to focus on here are the other two teams. Team Paper is Alona, Tainomi, and Jimbo, and Team Metal is Boa, Priyanka, and Lemon. Now, it's pretty obvious that the teams were not balanced whatsoever when it comes to production's favoritism of them. Tainomi has repeatedly been put in the bottom and given extremely harsh critiques, while Alona was just in the bottom three and has yet to fully deliver in a challenge. Jimbo is easily the favorite of the three by production, though. She was saved from a bottom three placement the week prior, and previously it seemed like the judges were really reacting positively to her. Well, until now. Boa, Lemon, and Priyanka were all giving great television, and it's very obvious they were saved from the bottom here. There were issues with all of their looks separately, and they had no through line between their looks to make it look like they were from the same fashion house, which was the point of the whole challenge. While you could easily see how the other two groups collabed on their looks to make them cohesive, there was nothing cohesive about this Team Metal's looks. While Team Paper's looks did look a bit cheesy, a little campy, they were given, like, colorful pieces of paper. I don't know what the judges expected from them. The amount of work that went into their looks, however, was very apparent. From Jimbo's intricate skirt, to the cages and the props Tainomi and Alona had, Team Metal really looked lackluster in comparison, so I was so confused when the judges said they liked their looks. And so was Priyanka. I mean, when a contestant is fully prepared to get torn to shreds, and then is genuinely surprised the judges like their look, that should be a sign right there that some riggery is going on. From Jeffrey tearing Jimbo to shreds, to Brooklyn saying Tainomi has been checked out the entire time she's been there, and then telling... Alona, she wants to hit her with a stick. I mean, the judges gave no mercy to Team Paper, and it felt very wrong looking at the more basic looks to their right that they would be getting such harsh critiques. It was very evident from the edit, the critiques, and the previous episodes that they wanted Tainomi, like, out of there. So they built up a friendship between her and Alona randomly in this episode, and then pin them against each other in the lip sync. Tainomi goes home, even though this might be my favorite lip sync of hers out of all of them. This entire episode is messy messy, and I genuinely felt so bad for the queens having to sit through those critiques. But I will say, the next episode is a nice reprieve from all of the riggery. Also, side note, they had a literal designer on the judging panel as the guest judge, but we barely hear anything from them in the entire critiques for a design challenge. Interesting. The fact that we have all these queens breaking down in this episode's Untucked just goes to show how much they've been going through and how such negative critiques can really affect your psyche in a competition like this. Uh, okay, moving on. Snatch Game. Judged pretty damn fairly. Jimbo, of course, gets the 
Welcome to the competition, Critique. Like, she hadn't been doing well almost every single week before them. This is basically the last time Jimbo gets her flowers from the judges, as almost every week after this one, the judges are playing a game called How Can We Downplay How Well Jimbo Is Doing? The mistreatment of Jimbo, I think, is the biggest gripe with this season from fans because it was so consistent and blatantly obvious and it just shows that the producers didn't fully realize the lightning in a bottle they had with her. Propping Jimbo up as a major threat heading towards the finale would have been a great storyline with all the other queens trying their best to take her out and come out on top. Instead, it seems like every week closer to the finale they were doing whatever they could to diminish her success. Let's move on to the next episode that had me scratching my head thinking what the fuck is happening here on this day, the Law Firm's Commercial Challenge. Um, okay. Um, here you have Priyanka and Lemon teamed up, and Scarlett and Alona teamed up, and both teams do a pretty similar ad. The same kind of general idea, and Priyanka and Lemon are given pretty positive critiques overall, but Scarlett and Alona are ripped to shreds for the format of their ad. But Priyanka and Lemon did something very similar and didn't get that critiqued for what we saw. The third team is Jimbo, Boa, and Rita, and they all get critiqued on their ad being unorganized and confusing, which it was. Their ad was very clearly the worst of the three, with there just not being a clear narrative or a clear idea and concept in play. But Jimbo was the highlight of this ad. And then Rita gets the win. Hmm. Yeah, I, um, I truly gave up at this point. Nothing that the queens actually do in the challenges matters, I guess. And we're just going to give out placements however we need to in order to fit the narrative. This was such a clear Boa and Rita bottom two. Their characters in the commercial made no sense based on the prompt they were given, and Rita had a terrible runway, which wasn't even denim, when their prompt was denim. And then Rita gets the win. Rita got the... Oh my goodness. It's not Rita's fault, and she should not have gotten any hate over this, but I can understand why fans were so frustrated because <laughs> you're watching this and you're like, oh, like this is what's going to happen. And then the exact opposite happens and you're like, okay, well, between Scarlett and Alona, who were both basically given the same critiques about their ad, only Alona is thrown into the bottom along with Boa, who was given the same critiques as Rita, who won the challenge. My brain is spinning. My brain is spinning. Another issue that I had with this episode is that the queens start talking about how Lemon is steamrolling the competition. But from what we've seen with the critiques, she's only had two weeks where she's been in the top and only one challenge win. So she hasn't really been coming off as that big of a threat to the viewer. But this is the issue of the editing telling us something is true rather than showing it to be true. The queens are telling us Lemon is a big threat to win, but from what we've seen in the story, she hasn't been doing as well as some queens like Scarlet and Rita and Jimbo have been doing. I know this is setting up for her win in the next episode, but it just stuck out to me because they were saying all of this and I was like, where? <laughs> uh, so yeah, Boa and Alona were in the bottom. Boa, because her story arc with Scarlet had been solved and she hadn't done well a couple of weeks in a row now. Alona, because they don't care about Alona. Oh look, another disaster of an episode, the pageant episode. This episode just proved to me that the original plan was never to crown Priyanka because they literally sacrifice her and throw her into the bottom over Rita Baga here, when Rita was clearly worse than Priyanka. And a lot of the issues that they had with Priyanka's performance actually saw more with Rita's performance. They tell Priyanka she has kind of a one-note performance. There's no levels and it doesn't go anywhere. But Priyanka is playing a pregnant pageant chick, right? And she gives birth, whatever, all these things. Rita has the same level throughout the entire thing. Her performance goes absolutely nowhere. And I'm like, are they just like saying Rita's 
critiques on the stage, but then they cut to Priyanka so that it sounds like it's coming for Priyanka instead. Jimbo was the clear winner of this pageant. She gets bottom three. Her look gets torn to shreds, despite it being fun and campy. See, I never wanted to do this video because it's literally just me shitting on it this whole season and tearing the whole season to shreds. I I like making videos on seasons I like so much more than videos on seasons I hate. <laughs> I feel like I'm just being so negative and like ripping everything to shreds. But I mean, I guess this is a good example of a season that the riggery is really what gets in the way of its own success. Alona finally goes home here. They use Priyanka to do it because they know Pri is a solid lip syncer. And Alona has already taken out two queens in lip syncs. That's how I'm personally justifying them saving Rita from the bottom here. The Lemon storyline hinted at last episode about her steamrolling does make more sense here when she does really well in the challenge and snags a second win. Now we're at the makeover. Jimbo gets shafted again in the critiques, despite doing a solid performance. She does this fun dominatrix look because, you know, Jimbo is known for wearing giant breastplates and slutty costumes, but then she gets thrown in the bottom three because they don't like that she did a slutty look, despite that being her drag, I don't know. But then they gave Rita the critique that she dressed too conservative, so I, I don't know what these people want. I find it hilarious, though, that... This is the one time they put Rita Baga in the bottom, and I don't even think she deserved it! Oh my gosh, a mess, a mess. Scarlet and Lemon had the worst looks of the night. Jimbo and Rita came in with really fun concepts and showed off their drag styles well. Priyanka gave a very clean and fun look. Lemon and Scarlet's looks were just not super fashionable. They didn't work. That's just my two cents. But, I mean, wow, they really hyped up Lemon as a huge threat, didn't they? Just to send her home two episodes later. The editing this season is so bizarre. Instead of hyping up the queens who actually make the top four, like Jimbo and Scarlet, they focus so much more on Lemon and Boa throughout the season. Even Priyanka, I don't think, gets that much positive critique throughout the season. She's not hyped up like Lemon is at points, or Rita is at points. The final four challenge is the ball, and honestly, everything checks out here. Jimbo going home here is unfortunately inevitable. She does the worst in the challenge and doesn't do well in the lip sync either, and it sucks to watch because I think she's the biggest bright spot on the season, but her elimination is 1,000% fair. And that leaves us at the finale, which Scarlet Bobo, who I've barely talked about because... She's really not involved in anything. They really don't hype her up or give her a ton of screen time until the very end of the season. She completely knocks the finale out of the park. The verse, the runway, the lip sync. Scarlet annihilated every portion of it. The only problem is she's ignored in the edit for half the season. So despite never placing below safe, the narrative is almost never about her. And when it is... It's about her friendship with Alona, which everyone finds annoying, or her fighting with Boa, which everyone finds annoying. So she's kind of not a winner pick at this point because they haven't spent any time with her at all. We haven't gotten to know Scarlet like we've gotten to know Rita or Priyanka or Jimbo. Rita does a solid job in the finale, but had like very little fan support due to the fans feeling like she was favored over Jimbo and the other queens who deserve some of her wins. Rita versus Jimbo was built up both by the edit and by the fandom as the big rivalry of the season, but despite Rita coming out on top, the fandom was vehemently Team Jimbo. So that leaves Priyanka, who felt disposable to the producers at times, but who was also the narrator of the entire season. She had a lovely personality, solid performances in a lot of the challenges, wins under her belt, great runways, and the fandom's support. Overall, I'm very happy with Priyanka's win. She is such a light, and I think overall the best choice to win in that top three. She fought for her spot, she earned her wins, and since the show, I mean, like, she's just proven time and time again she is such a superstar. Okay, I did it. <laughs> it's over. We're, we're moving on. Are you happy? <laughs> just kidding. I mean, I was going to make this video regardless. It was just like a, a matter of when. And I appreciate you guys for pushing me to get it out. 
this season, I think, suffers because the intent going in was to create drama and get social media in an uproar, but that's never the right headspace to be in when making a season of Drag Race. What really makes fans fall in love with a season is the drag queens themselves. Yes, the drama and the scandals, they're fun, but if it's all mean-spirited and trying to dim the light of the queens that were cast, fans can see right through it, and they did that with this season, which is why we basically get the exact opposite in season two. They really took a look at everything that made this season earn the poor reception it got and said, nope, let's switch it up. I am so glad they did, and I am so excited to talk about that season next. And if you're a fan of Canada's Drag Race Season 1, I'm sorry that this video basically just completely took a dookie on that entire season, but I think we all can agree it was a pretty rigged season overall, so there was a lot to discuss. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Here are the links to all of my social medias. Please make sure to follow my Instagram and my Twitter. And if you're able, check out my Patreon. We have a lot of fun events, bonus videos, and other content up on there. You can also join the Drag Detective Discord, which is for my patrons only. Even at the $1 level, you can get access to the Discord. We discuss new episodes, new tea, all of that. So I really appreciate your support there. I want to thank you guys so much again for tuning in in 2022, sticking with me through all of 2021. I'm excited to continue to make some great content. Let me know in the comments what kind of videos you would like to see. It has been a long, long day solving the mystery of what's my name. And the answer is... It's like the event.